And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, we're going to talk about the first ever NFL player to, well, former NFL player, to sign a professional basketball contract. Now, this comment coming in from Austin Rivers about saying that you can put 30 NBA players on an NFL roster, but you can't put 30 NFL players on an NBA roster. It's it sparked a lot of buzz coming in from both from football stars and a lot of football fans and a lot of NBA fans as well. So it's very very controversial because really like these are two ath- these are athletes that are playing completely different sports and like on top of that like the fact that it's just a completely different sport it's really just it's rude and it's like insulting to <coughs> excuse me it's insulting to say that um NBA athletes can play in a completely different professional league in a completely different sport like it's unbelievably disrespectful and everything was like everything was coming out like we even got video clips from like NFL players that are playing basketball and they're really they're not that bad like there's a lot of these um NFL players that are buckets like they can get a bucket however it's really like their height and their the size that's the difference and the reason why these athletes can't these NFL athletes can't compete in the NBA simply because of the height difference because like they might be fundamentally skilled however when you take into account like let's say for example I there was a clip of Tyreek Hill he was absolutely balling like he knew how to hoop but we all know Tyree Kill, he's relatively short. And he wouldn't, Steph Curry would tower over um, Tyree Kill. And because of that, it's like you, you really cannot, it's, you really cannot have these NFL players be on an NBA roster because of how tall they are the rest of the NBA players. And that sort of gives the NBA players an advantage. It might not give them an advantage at football, but it does give them an advantage in basketball and in every other facet. Now, on to the first NFL player. So, Devin Funches, he used to play for the Panthers and for four years of his career and was also on the Colts in his last year of his career. And first player to from the NFL to sign a professional basketball contract. So... He wasn't really, like, as a player, he wasn't really anything that, I would say, special, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to disrespect him, but he's one of those, like, uh, how do I put this? He's one of those receivers that was not talked about as much. And he was sort of, he was on the... He was on the same team that um, I believe Cam Newton was on when they made it all the way to the when they made it all the way to the Super Bowl, and he was one of those. He was one of the receivers for them, and that was his first year. And afterwards, the Car- the Panthers they weren't the same afterwards since like Cam Newton's MVP season, and the numbers that he was averaging throughout the NFL they were kind of. They were all right. Like they weren't. They weren't anything too special, but they were all right. So just just a little bit of football knowledge, like just a little bit of knowledge of just exactly who this player was in the NFL, and he signed a contract to play, um, in the Columbia Basketball League, and there's not much details yet because you know the contract was like literally just made. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at the the contract details of this player real quick because that's honestly an incredibly like historical thing given the fact like being versatile in both sports or well versatile ambidextrous whatever you want to call it in both sports is amazing like and let me see let's I wonder if he's actually I wonder if he's played a game there yet like um if the games have started but let me go ahead and see real quick, because there's no, there's only news outlets that are out, not really his, um, 
not really his contract deal. So let me let me go ahead and see if I can find his contract details because I was looking everywhere for the contract details of this of his um like his contract with the with the team, but so far like there's really not much there's not much information that's coming out. But he is the but he is going to be playing for the Caribbean Storm Llaneros. I believe that's what they're called. And um and I believe that's what that's how you pronounce it as well. I am Dominican, I do speak Spanish, so that is most def that is most definitely how you would pronounce it. Now yeah, there's no um there's no real argument on um there's there's no real like the discussion on his contract at all but ooh he is playing he is playing in basketball right now like he's actively playing so he is actively playing in these professional games like that is that is amazing the fact that he's like playing against like grown men in these big in these big games and did he ended up scoring yes he did he scored a he scored a point in this clip that I'm watching right now he's he he seems he seems solid. Like yeah, he seems like he knows what he's doing. In this um, in all of these clips that I'm watching right now, ooh, he's great rebound, especially for, especially for someone that short. But that's honestly like I mean that's probably why he was able to get into the league because a lot of these players they're looking rather short compared to the average NBA player. And I mean looking at Victor Wembanyama, maybe I'm sort of like blind to what short is now, but. His, I'm just looking at his uh, bio real quick. Oh, yeah, his height is six foot four. So he, it would seem that throughout through the clip he was playing like a center, but he's six foot four, and would only be a, he would only be a point guard in the NBA, just based off of these clips that I'm watching. Like in the NBA, he would be he would be a point guard, but that doesn't really look like he's a point guard in these clips that I've seen. But granted, like congratulations for him. That's definitely like something. That's definitely something to be proud of because being profession, being a pro in both the NFL and then being a pro in a col in a basketball league is outstanding in my opinion. Like there's really nothing there's really nothing that could even like it's there's there's very few athletes that were able to be good at um both sports like um Bo Bo Jackson that's another that's he's a prime example of one of those players like that and um trying to think off the top of my head any other player that are that is ambidextrous in multiple sports like there aren't that many people and Really, like it's when you're able to do it at such a high level, it's just you deserve all that respect. And it doesn't matter whether he's in the NBA or whether he's not in the NBA. That deserves my respect. Now, obviously, th that's not the NBA. That's obviously not the NBA. So it's the point still halfway stands. Like halfway that point stands. And it's really like, it's really just like, you know, not even, it's not even close to that. Kenneth in the chat, Deion Sanders, all-time Yankee. I, we're not going to talk about that, okay? That, that was, we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to, this is, this is basketball right here. So like, this is, this is why I host, this is why I host basketball podcasts, right? <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. But um, regardless, that's... Let's see. That's basically all I have for this show segment, and that's basically the end of the show. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show. Leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Before I end off the segment, I'd like to remind everybody to please use the link in the description to get your comments recognized or the link displayed below the ticker on every single show segment. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Really helps the show, makes it much more interactive between myself and you guys. Once again, it's displayed below the ticker as well as in the link in the description. And that's basically all I have for you guys today in this 
fourth segment. I hope you guys really enjoyed bringing um, Eric onto the show this time. And um, hopefully you enjoyed his takes. Hopefully you liked him. And hopefully you guys will go ahead and check out his wrestling podcast. And hopefully you guys also go ahead and check out Kenneth's football podcast that starts, I believe, a little bit earlier than mine. I'm not entirely sure exactly what time. I think 1030, I believe. His, um, is when the show starts. Is that right, Kenneth? Let me know if um, let me know if I'm wrong on that or if I'm right. But usually I'm in class when Kenneth is doing his podcast, which is why I don't know exactly what time he starts. But normally, like if I could, I would try to like peer in. But it's just like, given how the week has gone, a lot of busy stuff has been going on. But yes, oh, turns out I am right. That is, it starts at 10:30. So be sure to tune into his football podcast as well. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson, and as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to.